Right, before I start this video, I must say that it is optimally necessary that you gentlemen already possess, ideally, a good level of self-esteem or self-worth over your own identity as an individual, in terms of what you value, what your goals are, and also your confidence level. Because you can only go so far in trying to trick and tip your way out of your crippling social anxiety without the core foundation of what would eventually cure your anxiety in the first place. So if you gentlemen feel like you don't have a good level of self-esteem or self-worth yet, please do watch my Building Yourself worth video before you watch this one, as it will give you an idea of what to do first before you can properly break out from your social anxiety. Because regardless of however experienced you are in talking to people, without proper and adequate self-esteem or self-worth, it's only a matter of time before you return to your once dark and gloomy shell once again. Social anxiety is simply the combination of our fear of rejection or estrangement within a social setting and the personal feeling of inadequacy or inappropriateness to relate, affect, and conform to that social group. Now, the latter is what I've just described earlier in the video, and the former is what I'm going to assist you gentlemen in conquering. Because the reason for that fear is not only amplified because of your lack in confidence over yourself, but also due to you being utterly unfamiliar to the circumstance itself. Rejection is a feeling that you gentlemen must become accustomed with because it's inevitable. Men will always face way more rejection in life than women, whether it is dating or employment, it's no different. Most socially anxious people treat a single rejection as the nail in the coffin for the pointlessness of their entire existence, which is obviously a stupid thing to even consider. But then again, it is something that they are utterly unfamiliar with because they either rarely or ever put themselves at risk for it, or maybe their initial experience in rejections were quite dramatically and dishearteningly traumatized and much less civilized to say the least, which is obviously amplified with their own low level of self-esteem. And that immense sense of inferiority and insecurity is what makes them unable to maintain eye contact and feeling highly anxious that they might offend anyone and cause harm to themselves. That is why, more often than not, they become a notorious isolated recluse of an individual. Which is why, my method in dealing with social anxiety is to not put yourself directly in the middle of the ocean full of social interactions, because you'll get utterly overwhelmed and swallowed into absolute rigidity or awkwardness. But instead, I'd prefer you to familiarize yourself with the shallow waters firsthand and then over time slowly and gradually progress towards the deeper waters. Because I believe to conquer any type of fear there must be a systematic method of progression, rather than just simply putting yourself or any individual for that matter straight into the middle of the seven circles of hell without them even knowing how to open the gates of hell. Now I've actually mentioned and briefly described this method way back when this channel started, but I think it is more appropriate to give them a much more focused attention in a video specifically destined for them. I used to call this method the over-the-counter conversation, but now I'd like to call it simply as the icebreaker. And I'm sure some of you gentlemen already have used this method, but in a nutshell, this method basically revolves around starting and maintaining conversations with official people or professionals, ideally of the opposite sex, who are working professionally to serve you, such as the cashiers, waitresses, stewardess, nurses, salespeople, bank tellers, and even massage therapists. Now here, the main advantage is that you don't really have to worry about being rudely or unethically rejected because these people had no choice but to serve you, as that is their line of work. So whatever questions you want to ask them, no matter how awkward, dry, or pointless they are, most likely they will try to answer your questions as best as possible to meet your demands, which will make it even easier for you to test the waters and develop the much-needed familiarization of actually interacting acting. Even if they do reject you, they will more often than not do it in a subtle, professional, and respectful way, which of course will help soften the blow for your sensitive asses. Of course, do your best to make it as appropriate as possible. Don't directly ask personally deep questions right off the bat. And I know some of you gentlemen hate small talks, not because it's shallow, but because you're just not good at small talks and you're finding it hard to build from there on. But let's be realistic here. Every real-life conversation always starts with a little bit of small talks in order to get each other as comfortable as possible with the interaction. And if you think that it'll be boring for the other person if you engage in small talks, just remember that you are there to build your fluency and seamlessness in conversing with another person and being able to look them directly in the eye when talking, not to get laid for the day, okay? Now, the key here is to start exercising, practicing, and building a habit of not being in your head all the time when you're talking with someone. Because people with social anxiety will oftentimes unnecessarily overthink in order to please someone or in fear of offending anyone. Haunting questions like, what should I say? Do I look good? How should I start? What questions should I ask her? What if I say this? What if I do this? What if she doesn't like me? How should I act so that I look proper? All of these questions in your head will only make you stutter profusely and become chronically unable to maintain eye contact. 
This is the reason why you are socially awkward and feel extremely uncomfortable when you walk in the mall where there are lots of people around because you're just so internally obsessed or focused that you are unable to read the situation around you. You are extremely worried about how you present yourself and you think that everyone is watching your every move down to the last thread of hair. When the truth is, no one is watching and it's only you who feels that way. People oftentimes just took a brief glance at you and their minds are already preoccupied with other things. They are just busy minding their own business because they've got their own problems to solve, places to go and stuff to do. That is why again, it is an absolute must that you build enough self-confidence so that you can have that reassuring feeling in yourself. Even if people do take their time to stare at you so that you don't have to suffer this particular niggle and eventually embarrassing yourself through awkward behaviors of desperate self adjustments. Focus on asking what you want to ask while at the same time try your best to read the situation around you to determine if it is appropriate to ask that question. Like for example, a stewardess probably isn't the most appropriate individual to be asked how's your day going because they're constantly on the move and have other people to serve besides you. That question is more appropriate to salespeople and bank tellers who oftentimes have an extensive personalized one-to-one -one interaction with you and you can also build from that question. It's more appropriate to ask a stewardess what would you recommend for me when they ask you what meal would you like but then again don't overanalyze it because you'll become immensely hesitant and that overthinking brain of yours will hold you back from taking that initiative as usual as a beginner once again start by just asking what you want to ask questions that pop at the front of your mind don't worry if you'll make things awkward or slightly inappropriate because everybody does that once in a while just focus on breaking the ice and opening your mouth because on your first day, that is what you should solely aim for. Breaking the ice and initiating that conversation and the rest that comes after it is completely your own wheel to steer. Always keep firmly in mind that no matter how uncomfortable it might be initially, don't take those cringe and embarrassing moments to heart. Try your best to take it in a stride. Remember, it's your first day. You'll always have another chance to improve with another individual next time around. There is never only one cashier working in a grocery store or only one salespeople in a clothing store. So don't treat your failure like a yearly lottery, but more like a casual game of poker. You might lose some this round and you might win some the next round. This is how you deal with rejection. Accept its inevitability in order for you to dismiss its infectivity. One thing to pay attention to is that these officials normally converse daily in a professional manner with the purpose of fulfilling their work. So to have you initiate a normal conversation that takes them out of their mundane and tedious world is almost always a breath of fresh air for them. Even if it is slightly awkward, they would be even more delighted and enthusiastic to continue conversing with you. Over time, as you get comfortable initiating conversation with these official individuals, you can then start transitioning to day-to-day -day interaction in the bookstore or a coffee shop or a cinema. But of course, you must anticipate that the rate of rejection will be significantly higher and that it won't be as civilized, respectful or professional as those officials beforehand. And depending on where you live, some people may just be uncomfortable or not used to getting initiated on for a conversation. Some might just put their palms up to your face to tell you that they're not interested. But then again, this is something you must familiarize yourself with and there is no other way around it. You can't control how other people think, behave and react, so you'll just have to learn how to live with it if they do reject you inappropriately. Just take it on the chin, wipe the blood and crack on, just like when you're in sparring. In terms of the blueprint on how to maintain or keep a conversation going, which I'm sure lots of you gentlemen are wondering, there is no such thing as a definitive answer because everyone has different ways to do that. But if there is one term I could use, it'll probably be relate and build, which basically means whatever question you are asking, the following question should be something that has some relation to the very previous question, so that even when you transition away from one topic, the next topic still has some connection to the previous topic, even as they gradually fail. Fade. For example, do you live far from here? How long does it take for you to commute? You use public transport? Do you ever consider driving on your own? Car or motorbike? Are you afraid of the rain or aren't you afraid of getting wet from the rain? What's your favorite thing to do on a rainy day? Simple progressive questions like that and of course depending on the answer your next question should always build the conversation whether you want to remain in the same topic or transition away from the topic. It doesn't have to be purely question based you could also turn it into assumptions or even statements such as I bet you use public transport no wonder you take that long to commute or I'm pretty confident that you haven't got your driver's license yet. Things like that, and you can even mix in your own sense of humor into it. Just remember to play along with it. Don't be so serious, give a nice tease or even insult them playfully. 
Of course, like I said, there is no set in stone method towards social interactions. And what I've just explained is merely a suggestion, not a prescription. As everyone plays the game of social interaction differently, and everyone is different. Some excels in a crowded room full of people, and some excels in one-to-one -one interaction or interactions where there are fewer than 10 people present in the room. Social interactions are all about you finding your own groove, the best circumstances and conversations where you can connect with another person or multiple people. And it is utterly important for you to have confidence and a high level of self-esteem to reinforce your social capabilities so that you have that sense of security and reassurance in yourself no matter how bad the interaction goes. Whether it is you getting rejected or you removing yourself from their vicinity due to not being able to conform to them. Remember, it's not and never is the end of the world when you get rejected or when you are unable to click with someone. Everyone is not supposed to like you and match you. Remember that. There is always another day and most importantly, another chance for you to have a go. Thank you for watching.